that's the key that's the beginning initiation is a beginning and we do initiate in our, our society um, you can check out my spiritual mom's website I will give it to you uh, if you are interested but we don't initiate um, lightly we don't we don't we don't just take anybody no more um, before I said no more because before it was more um, free you know the 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 spirits anybody has you know um, that was attracted to voodoo would uh, would we would accept but um but now there's a lot of uh, confusion and a lot of problems between um, people because they go from house to house they mix and match they go from hungan to mambo they do readings from this person and then go to this person and it's all confused they look at pictures you look at pictures on the internet you copy and alter a shrine that you see um, that is dedicated for example to ogu you put swords on it you know, uh, you put you put machetes, you put uh, the picture of Saint George, you put a sword for Saint Jacques, you put uh, his uh, barbum court rum, and you don't even know uh, if that's your spirit, if you if that spirit is willing to work with you. So that's putting you in unbalanced an unbalanced situation because you you are not the one who chooses the spirits and that the prop that's the problem the spirit chooses you that's to maintain balance and to be able to because we have an escort around us everybody has several spirits you know and as you go by the levels the more um, spirit you attract some come and go some are your actual you know um, core you have a spirit that dominates your head called Mete Loa Mete and um, um, this spirit is your main spirit I won't tell you mine but you can guess if you want to I don't want to tell you it's not like it's secret because I'm not scared but still I want to keep it private However, the, the point is that um, our rules and reg regulations are called, uh, we have a specific word for it, and it's called regular mind. And this is basic principles, protocols, and rules that we follow. You do things in a certain way, it's a language, right? You use the rattle in a certain way. You know it represents its own language everything has a purpose of what you do in voodoo so you can't just step into a religion you don't know the language in and I'm not talking about Creole because you don't have to know Creole to be a voodoo isan even if it's um, beneficial we're talking about we're talking about uh, connecting with the the, the regular mind, the rules, the protocols, um, in the language of uh, the spirits, you know, um, there's gestures and the people don't even know this, the dances, the dances, the moves of the legs when you're in a ceremonial context are different from Petro. To Rada, to uh, Ibo, to Congo, to Kuzin even have his own steps. And people, people don't know, um, and that's what you know. You should learn. At first, uh, you learn slowly, but then as time goes by, you start to notice uh, things and you ask questions, and that's 
how it is. But my point is that, you know, you don't just go into a religion with, with um, all those um, specific ways of service that's disrespectful and just put them in and do whatever you want to do uh, or because you feel uh, that the spirit are talking to you to to give a service I had an experience a personal experience actually uh, I was 18 years old when the spirits called me uh, first time and um, I'm not gonna tell the whole story because it's kind of private but um, and it's long so again I don't, I don't want to keep on extending the video so I have to cut it in several parts but anyway my story is I was visited by um, a loa and um, I'm not going to tell you which one it was and he was standing by my bed the first time uh, spirit manifested like that clearly um, and he was talking to me he was talking to me and I could I, I zoomed into his face kind of and he told me uh, something important obviously but I couldn't understand what he was saying. And then it was night and I was about to go to sleep. He appeared right after I laid myself in bed and then he spoke, I didn't understand. And then snap, he was gone and it was day. So everything happened in a second, like a second from night to day. Like hours passed, and that's that's uh, you know. Normally, I would probably you know there's there's somebody in the house. I would freak out, but I would, I was calm. That was my first experience with a spirit manifest itself like that. You know, everybody has those experiences. It's different from person to person. But I want to tell my story. Two years later, when I was twenty, I had a premonition, a dream. I dreamt and I traveled in my dream and I traveled and I saw um, I saw my my kanzo I saw my initiation and I heard the spirit in the background telling me who it was and that I have been chosen that I'm chosen to go to Haiti at that point I didn't have no money I woke up I saw my whole uh, council basically. He showed me, and then I woke up and I realized that this is, you know, um, where I belong, where I feel I have to go. So what happened next was that. That um, I didn't, I didn't have money to to travel and for initiation. But I did some prayers to um, my head spirit, which I knew from before, and um, I did also some work and I got the money after about two months about two months I got the money to travel I got the money to to um, initiate unfortunately I was initiated by a by um fake a fraud uh, a woman that a lot of people she disappeared but I was you know, um, it was a purpose for that because that's how I met my mom. And that was in 2006, I believe. 2006. Yeah. And through that 
experience, you know, I saw through her and I left. I said, you know, I was I was there, I saw no spirits, I saw I couldn't feel the spirits, I saw fake possessions, you know, it was just a, a game and that's why you have to do your research. Do your research thoroughly, very thorough about who you initiate with, who you go to, who you ask for advice because it's about your life and an initiation is for life. Okay? It's not something that goes away when you initiate um, your the society becomes your family your spiritual family for life so it's a life choice life okay so think about that before you haste yourself for anything and you have to feel it you have to feel it and also when it comes to um, your head spirit let's get back to that subject which is the lower method. Um, there's no readings that can reveal that. Okay? So whatever people tell you, that they can throw cards or whatever bones or sticks or leaves. Uh, because I, I can use leaves for divination if I want to. But there's no... That's why I'm mentioning it. I can even use... Uh, I used to... I actually started out with the matches to divine with matches I threw them down and uh, I saw the symbols and what it represented it spoke to me you can divine with anything basically if you have the power the cards are just cards it's just a system anyway um, Go do your research, find your hungan or mambo. Again, don't jump around from person to person. Be loyal to the person that you find and when you choose that person. But don't, if you feel there's something wrong, don't hesitate to question if you're in the right place either. Trust yourself, trust your spirit, trust your heart, and act on how you feel. Okay? Because one house, you know, uh, if you go from, from people to people, one house may have a different way of doing things, another house may have a uh, unique you know, unique ways of doing things, a uh, special way of doing things as well. Um, and this has been, you know, directed from this house or that house or that house or that house, that society for a generation, something that has been passed on so that's why it's a little bit different from house to house we still have the same rules when it comes to Aglamar mostly Megan um, Shimen the big road open up for you may you find the path through the crossroad when you stumble upon the crossroad, may the spirits lead you to the right path. Religiously and in life in general. May they guide you the right way. I